defining events of our time. Man's greatest moments. God, so help me God. And darkest hours. Examined by today's important thinkers. Abraham Lincoln. That is who the Lincoln Memorial is named after. On the History Story. The year is 1692. In Salem, Massachusetts, superstition gives way to madness. And what started as a perfectly understandable and responsible effort to catch witches rapidly deteriorated into a witch hunt. One woman was accused of witchcraft by her husband, who claimed she harangued him concerning chores, barked orders like a beast, and refused him sexual congress. All compelling evidence that she was a witch, or at least a fucking bitch. Four-year-old Dorcas Good was even accused of witchcraft, which is about reason one billion why you shouldn't name your kid Dorcas. Preposterous tests, foregone conclusions. You could get burned at the stake for burning a stake. It was believed a witch could never cry, not even at the end of Marley and Me. Finally, the mass psychosis seems to subside. Eventually, the girls' accusations became too wild and unbelievable for even the people who murdered human witches to believe. It was basically like the last season of Lost. And some questions that may never be answered. Now, these witches were accused of casting spells. If only they could have mastered the don't murder me for no reason spell, everything could have been different. April 15th, 1865. President and Mrs. Lincoln decide to spend an evening at the theater. Many scholars cite this event in the debate over whether Lincoln was gay, because of course he was watching a play. John Wilkes Booth was perhaps the most famous uh, stage actor of the time. He was almost like a, a Philip Bosco. <laughs> so many warning signs for Booth, such as his one-man play, Guy Who Wants to Kill the President. About actors, Booth said, they know little, think less, and understand next to nothing. So say what you will about John Wilkes Booth, but he really got actors. On April 10th, 1912, after a mere week of sea trials, Titanic, the largest ocean liner ever built, leaves Southampton, England on a maiden voyage she is destined never to complete. The Titanic was so lavish, the butlers had butlers. And those butlers had butlers in training that followed them around like an Applebee's. Many people were tempted to blame the iceberg just because it had a Jewish name. But at midnight, disaster struck. Captain Edward Smith was on his final trip before retirement, and as the ship hit the iceberg, he could be heard exclaiming, I'm too old for this shit. The lifeboats were just there to make everyone feel safe, even though they had no intention of ever using them. It's kind of like the condom I keep in my wallet. Uh, of course, I think most people know this, uh, many of the lifeboats left with only first-class passengers and quite a few empty seats, but the empty seats were needed for the champagne. That was the fact of it. As the ship begins to sink, panic breaks out on deck. It always bothers me that people use the expression rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic as a metaphor for futility. Actually, quite the opposite is true. I, I mean, I, according to some studies, there are about 30 different ways you can rearrange deck chairs to make like a raft. And lessons never to be forgotten about man's hubris. And now, the History Story presents Living History with Kevin McCaffrey. Hello, I'm Kevin McCaffrey, and I'm standing here at what was once known as Ford's Theater, the site of the Lincoln assassination but it has been erased as if to hide a nation's shame. 
Now, do the people inside now fully grasp the enormity of what has happened here? Let's find out. Okay, we are now inside what was formerly known as Ford's Theater, and already I'm seeing many places of note. For instance, over there by the Kettleweights, that's actually where the Lincoln family entered on that fateful evening. And uh, over the men's spa, that was actually Booth's dressing room at the time. And over there by the bikes, that's where Lincoln was sitting when everything happened. You know, this is a really nice gym. So how does it feel to be on hallowed ground? What are you talking about? Leave me alone. How soon we forget. So do you think the course of history Dude, would eventually- Dude, get the hell out of here! All right, okay. So, how does it feel to be on the site of Lincoln's assassination? I don't think that's right. Yeah, you and the rest of America, sweetheart. So do you think Booth was working with the Confederacy? What the fuck?! I'm just saying! So from all this information, what conclusions can we draw? What are you doing? I told you... I'm trying to tell the stop, story stop. of your history. Go. You gotta go. It's a customer story. No, you gotta go. I it's told an you important a bunch of times. It's an important story. Let's go. One of our greatest presidents. Let's go. You, you hate freedom, obviously. Let's go. I think that's clear. Uh, well, they say that those who learn nothing from history are doomed to repeat it. So I guess let's just hope President Obama doesn't join this gym. But still, uh, it is amazing to be at the place where President Abraham Lincoln was murdered in cold blood. That's in D.C., idiot. What? What did he say? He said it was in D.C. No. Yeah, that, that's, right that's what he said. I'll pull it up for you. Did we, did, did we really not? Nobody looked this up? Wikipedia, Nobody? Ford's Theater, historical landmark in Washington, D.C. Who goes to D.C. to see a play? I mean, it had to be here, right? Wow. Nice job, guys. For the history story, uh, I'm, I'm Kevin McCaffrey. Up next on the history story, Richard Nixon, the original dog whisperer. But first, on this day in history, Teddy Roosevelt abandons beekeeping forever after being stung in the genitals 47 times. The wife of William Howard Taft pretends to be asleep when her husband enters the room to avoid having sex. And after a meal with friends, Confucius suggests they split the bill evenly, even though he knows his meal was more expensive. The History Story, a series where the key moments in history come together with thoughts and ideas and musings about those moments.